Now, of course, I have to bring this up because this is talked about so much. I heard, and it is the teaching that just Christmas trees are pagan. And if you ask people that believe this to take you to a passage, they always turn you to the same place. Jeremiah chapter number 10. Jeremiah chapter number 10. I'm going to show you that Jeremiah chapter 10 is not talking about a Christmas tree. We look at Jeremiah chapter number 10, verse number 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Now a pagan is a heathen, right? And be not dismayed at the signs of the hev of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Right? Yeah. Look at verse number three. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth the tree out of the forest. So let's follow this step by step. What do we have right now? We have a tree that's taken. Just like that tree over there. Except it's a real tree. And it's cut down. That's what we have, right? An axe is even mentioned here, I believe, at the end. Yeah. Cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of, <coughs> of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Verse 4. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. So they stop right there. You know what word they focus on? They home in on there? Deck. They deck it with silver and with gold. Now, I'll say this. Before I knew the Bible's language, because the King James Bible reads a little bit differently than the way in which we speak today. That's a fact. Before I knew the Bible's language and I studied the Bible's language, I could see how the untrained you know, Bible student or an untrained Christian could be presented with this and be like, whoa, I am getting rid of my Christmas tree. I can understand that, really. But I'm going to show you specifically in the context that there's no way that this is talking about a Christmas tree. Number one, the very first de definition in any main dictionary, if you look it up, the word deck, do you know what it means? Cover. To cover. To cover, right? That is why we call, you know, in, in the back, what we would sometimes consider to, as a porch. That's why you call it a deck. But people see deck and silver and gold and there's a tree and it's got to be a Christmas tree. No, deck here means to cover. Then also, what do we see? They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. So what we have is a tree, right, that has been taken and covered with what? Silver and gold. And then it's nailed down. Now, before I even go any further, I, I just went out there and I cut a tree I put it right here, and common sense, before I deck it or cover it all with silver and gold, what am I going to do? I would cut all the branches off, and then I would cover it with silver and gold. What do I have? Just picture what I just explained, without me even using the word. What was it? An idol. An idol. What do you think idols are made out of? Wood. Well, look further. Let's read this. Verse 5. They are upright as the palm tree. So this is something that's upright like a palm tree or like a tree, right? But speak not. Now, hold on. Why would it be saying that this doesn't speak? Makes perfect sense if it's an idol. Right. Look what it says next. They must needs be born. Why would that matter? It needs to be carried. Why would that matter? Because it's made into like a person. It's made into like a God. He's saying they can't speak. You know what this is said about all the time in the Bible? Idols. All the time. They can't hear, speak. It's God mocking the idol is what it is. Th these people, their foolishness of the heathen. And what does the heathen always do in the Bible? Every time, what do they do? They're worshiping idols. You never find a heathen getting a Christmas tree and, decking and, and, and decorating a Christmas tree. That's ridiculous. Right. That's never found in the Bible one time. All right, verse 5. Uh, they must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them. Why would you be afraid of them? Because it's a false god. That's what he's saying. Don't be afraid of them because it's not a real god. Be not afraid of them for they cannot do evil. Saying they can't hurt anyone. Neither also is it in them to do good. They're not real. The idol is not real. That's the point. For as much as there is none like unto thee. So what did he just do? He contrasted the idol, the false god that can't do evil, with who? 
The real God that right. can do evil. Not sin, but destruction. Right. He can hurt. He can do good. He can do things. He can hear. He doesn't need someone to carry him around. Right. Notice that, because this is going to be very important in our cross-reference. And then he says, verse 6, For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Who would not fear thee, O King of nations? For to thee doth it appertain. For as much as among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdoms there is none like unto thee, but they are altogether brutish and foolish. Now watch this. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. What's, what is a stock? I'm talking about the wood again. I'm talking about that tree again. The stock is a doctrine of vanities. Silver, look at this, spread into place. What does it mean to spread it? It's talking about them decking it. They're spreading it all over the stock. They're, they're covering the stock. Spread into plates is brought from Tarshish and gold from Euphas, the workmen of the work the work of the workmen and of the hands of, look at this, the founder. You know what a founder is in the Bible? You're they're making an idol. They're creating an idol. Blue and purple is their clothing. They are all the work of cunning men. But the Lord is the true God. Notice that. He's the true God. Why? Because people are worshiping what we just described. But the Lord, that's not a real God, but the Lord is a true God. Amen. You think people actually believe that Christmas trees were gods? Come on. They're talking about idols, my friend. Right. Look, the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble. Saying again, he can do evil. He can hurt. He can destroy. It says... And the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. Thus shall ye say unto them, watch this, the gods, little g, talking about the idols, the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He hath made the earth by his power, he hath established the world by his wisdom, and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. When he uttereth his voice, there's a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh the lightnings with rain and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasures. Watch this. We haven't changed context. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image. Case closed. Wow. Super clear. Amen. Every founder, that founder we were talking about before, what was he doing? He was making a graven image. God's contrasting the idol with the true God. Okay? Now, it says every founder is confounded by the, by the graven image for his molten image. Talking about decking it with silver and gold. Talking about spreading it into silver plates. For his molten image is falsehood. Look at this again. And there is no breath in them. Notice that. There's no breath in them. What do you need to speak? Breath. Look over there again at verse number five. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. Now, keep your hand here and go to Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 19. Look at verse 18 first. <clears throat> to whom then will you liken God, or what likeness will you compare unto him? Does that sound familiar? What was God doing? Saying, I'm the true God and they're not, in Jeremiah chapter 10. So he starts off, verse 18, to whom then will you liken God, or what, or wit, or what likeness will you compare to him? The workman, that sound familiar? Melteth a graven image, and the goldsmith spreadeth, look at this, it over with gold and casteth silver chains. It's almost like six or seven of the same words. They talk about gold, they talk about silver, they talk about spreading it, the workman and the founder. Look further, look at verse 10. <clears throat> he that is so impoverished that he hath no oblation chooseth a tree that will not rot. Why does he choose the tree? Why? Because he's got to cut down the tree and then he spreads gold and silver over top of it. Look further. <clears throat> Isaiah 40, verse 20 again. So it says, Choose of the tree that will not rot. He seeketh unto a cunning workman to prepare a graven image. Look at this. That shall not be moved. Why is it not moved? What did they do to the other tree? They got hammered, they got nailed, and they fastened it that it moved not. Literally, every single element is found right here. Even without Isaiah 40, 19, the whole context of Jeremiah 10 is about an idol. The whole context. But comparing this on top of that, there's no way out of it. Christmas trees are not pagan. This is as plain as the nose on your face. Christmas trees are never talked about as being pagan ever in the Bible. 
Amen. Ever. If you think it's sinful, then show me something in the Bible. If it's not in the Bible, then you are teaching for doctrines the commandments of man. That's what you are doing, and that's sinful, my friend. That is a sin when you try to impress what you believe, and it's not what the Bible teaches upon me or upon anyone else. I'm not saying that you have to have a Christmas tree. I'm not saying you're sinning if you don't have a Christmas tree. Just because Catholics put up a Christmas tree at a certain time and I do it too doesn't make it wrong. There's a lot of things that Catholics do that I do too. Do you understand what I'm saying? We both do a lot of the same things. We both drink milk and wear clothes. Are those things sinful? Do you understand what I'm saying, how far you can take this? Where do we draw this line? You know where we draw the line? The Bible. Amen. So if it's wrong, then the Bible better tell me it's wrong. Okay? So... The Bible tells you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And we follow God's law. That's where we draw our line. And this everything's pagan attitude is foolishness. Right. I'll tell you what's pagan. The things that heathen, because the word pagan is not in the Bible. If you find a heathen doing it and God's condemning it, don't do it. There is nothing wicked or sinful about a Christmas tree. 